vectors a and b acting at a common point o is represented both in magnitude and direction by the adjacent side of the parallelogram that is oq and op so i can find out what is the value of sn using sin theta formula because opposite by hypotenuse in triangle psn will give me the value of sn vector a is now resolved splitted into x axis its component along x axis plus its component along y axis Welcome back to session 3 on chapter 4 motion in a plane. I am Nishman Anjama faculty of physics in Vidyashram Pre University College the temple of excellence Mysore. So in the previous session session 1 and session 2 we studied what do you mean by motion in two dimension what is two dimensional motion and in today's session we shall study what is subtraction of two vectors let us derive the expression for magnitude and direction of two vectors and we'll study what do you mean by resolution of vector and what is unit vectors and solve a numerical so to begin with so far we studied triangle law parallelogram law polygon law all these laws are important to understand this session so if you have not gone through my session 2 on motion in a plane please go through the previous session and then watch the session 3 so start with we have subtraction we have subtraction of vectors so what is vectors keep in mind vectors they give the depend both on magnitude as well as direction so we are studying what is subtraction of vectors can For example, we have for example we have one minus four is equal to one plus of minus four. So look at this LHS one minus four. Look at this RHS one plus of minus four. We know plus into minus gives us minus plus plus gives us plus minus minus again gives us plus. We know this. So plus minus is nothing but minus here. So one minus four or one plus of minus four, both are nothing but same, right? Both LHS and RHS are one and same, right? In the both the way we are finding the difference itself. So subtraction of vectors cannot be done directly. We cannot subtract two vectors directly. So we define subtraction in terms of addition. So we get the subtraction. So we define subtraction in terms of addition. plus so we can't subtract two vectors directly so we are indirectly doing the subtraction operation of vectors so let us start subtraction of vector b from vector a subtraction of vector b from a is defined as the addition of vector minus b to vector a so if you want to subtract vector a minus vector b subtraction of two vectors are done with the help of by adding by adding minus b vector to vector a this is nothing but a minus b is same as a plus of minus b plus minus is nothing but minus so we are defining subtraction in terms of addition so we arrive at subtraction of vector because we cannot directly subtract vector so we are indirectly subtracting the two vectors with the help of addition here so we have vector a we have vector b we want to find out the difference between these two vectors i want to find out a minus b a is one vector b is another vector so what i'll do i will add i will add minus b vector to vector a so i'll get resultant r i'll get resultant r so you can look at the diagram here this is your plus b and the downside indicates if this is your b vector the reverse of that indicates that it is minus b vector the opposite in direction so this is b vector then the reverse of that this gives you minus b vector and minus b vector and this is your a vector from triangle law from the triangle law of vector addition we know that resultant r is sum of two sides is sum of two sides a plus b 
gives you resultant r by the third side in the triangle of vector addition so if a is your resultant r so this pt you can see it is opposite in direction this pt gives you the resultant vector r the third side of the triangle so that is equal to vector a plus we have minus here the reverse of direction of b so it is minus b so this gives you subtraction of vector using triangle of vector addition so we cannot subtract two vectors directly so we are defining subtraction of two vectors in terms of addition if you have vector a and vector b i want to find out what is the difference between a and b i want to subtract vector a and b so a minus b is equal to i am adding negative of vector b i am adding negative of vector b to vector a that is a plus of minus b so that will give my resultant vector pt here qt represent minus b vector again pq represents a vector and pt the third side of the triangle represents my resultant vector so resultant vector pt is equal to pt is equal to sum of two sides pq plus qt so it is a plus what is qt of minus b of minus b pq is a plus qt is minus b the reverse of vector b in the negative axis so r is equal to a plus of minus b i am adding negative of b to vector a negative of b to vector a that in turn gives my resultant vector so this is subtraction of vector both are nothing but same but i am defining in terms of plus operation next i have magnitude and direction of resultant of two vectors magnitude and direction of resultant of two vectors you can also get the question as derive the expression derive the expression for magnitude and direction of two vectors say a and b so it is basically a derivation where find the magnitude and direction when you say vector it is magnitude and direction so what should i do find the magnitude and direction of the resultant of two vector of the resultant of two vector what is resultant r resultant of two vectors say a and b in terms of their magnitude and angle theta is nothing but direction magnitude and direction between them so direction magnitude and angle theta between them so look at this so i am considering parallelogram law of vector addition we have discussed about parallelogram law of vector addition in our previous session where the diagonal gives the resultant of two vectors keep in mind the diagonal gives the resultant of two vectors in case of parallelogram law of vector addition so look at this diagram consider two vectors a and b acting at a common point origin o consider two vectors a and b acting at a common point o is represented both in magnitude and direction by the adjacent side of the parallelogram that is oq and op then the resultant vector r resultant vector r is given by the diagonal of the parallelogram os which is passing from the same intersecting point which is drawn from the same point of intersection i have two adjacent sides in a parallelogram acting at a common point o from this common point of intersection of two vectors i am drawing a diagonal which is os that is my resultant vector r suppose now you can see op line segment op is represented by vector a oq is represented by vector b os the diagonal the resultant vector r clear op represents vector a another adjacent side of parallelogram oq represents vector b from the two point of intersection of two adjacent side from o we are drawing a diagonal os 
that gives me the resultant vector r now i will draw a perpendicular sn i will draw a perpendicular sn perpendicular sn to line segment op to line segment op so theta is angle between angle between so theta is angle between vector a and b then you have alpha is the angle between is angle between alpha is angle between vector r i a theta is a making an angle between vector b and vector a alpha is making an angle between direction of vector r and direction of vector a so this is the consideration that i take for deriving the expression for magnitude and direction of two vectors so i hope the diagram and the representations are clear now first what i have to find out magnitude then we'll move on to direction magnitude of two vectors so two vectors are nothing but a a and b vectors here how will you find out magnitude so consider a triangle osn consider a triangle o s n consider triangle osn it's a right angle triangle so what is triangle osn i can write triangle osn as hypotenuse square os square is equal to o n square plus opposite s n square so what is o n here what is o n here it is o p plus p n what is o n it is o p plus p n isn't it it is o p plus p n makes the line segment o n substitute that here so it is o s square is equal to o p plus p n whole square plus s n square clear i have considered a right angle triangle o s n so i'll write hypotenuse square is equal to adjacent square plus opposite square so o n is nothing but o p plus p n i have made the substitution so what is a plus p whole square a square plus b square plus 2 ab split this into a plus b whole square formula so o s square is equal to o p square plus p n square plus 2 o p p n plus s n square plus s n square so what is my o p here it is nothing but vector a so it is vector a square p n square is equal to s n square o q is parallel to s n square so two sides of parallelogram are parallel o q is b vector then s n is also b vector p n square is equal to s n square so both will be vector b so plus 2 what is op here op is again a vector into p n it is p n not p n square plus what is s n square this is parallel to this so this will also be a vector b so it will be vector b square so what is os os is r vector so it is r vector square so i want to consider this as a equation 1 equation 1 i want to find out what is p n what is p n to substitute in this equation 1 so that i'll get what is my resultant r square r square so how will i find pn now so what is pn i want to find what is pn what is pn so i can substitute so consider triangle consider triangle psn consider this triangle to find out what is pn so it is consider triangle psn so it is a right angle triangle it is a right angle triangle so what is cos theta if you find 
what is adjacent by hypotenuse if you can find what is adjacent by hypotenuse that will give you what is the value of pn what is adjacent by hypotenuse it is my cos theta so cos theta is equal to what is adjacent here adjacent is pn by hypotenuse is ps so pn is equal to bring this to this side so it will give you ps cos theta ps cos theta so what is ps oq is parallel to ps as well as sn so your ps will also be b vector sides of two parallel gram are parallel to each other so if oq is b vector then ps as well as sn will be b vector so this will give you pn is equal to what is ps it is b vector cos theta it is b vector cos theta i got what is the value of pn by using cos theta adjacent by hypotenuse so substitute that in your equation 1 so what will you get r vector square is equal to a vector square plus 2 into vector a what is pn vector b cos theta plus b square plus b square so this is your magnitude of two vectors so magnitude is equal to r square vector a square plus 2 ab cos theta plus b square so this is your equation 1a so this is your equation for magnitude of two vectors now how will you find direction how will you find direction direction of two vectors that is nothing but angle theta between two vectors so how will you find direction now to find direction i will consider the same angle osn osn the nlo triangle osn so to consider the direction i will take tan alpha tan alpha is what tan alpha in this triangle osn so consider triangle osn in this osn what is the triangle tan alpha tan alpha is nothing but opposite by adjacent opposite by adjacent gives you tan alpha so what is opposite by adjacent sn by on sn by on sn opposite by adjacent on again what is on here what is on here on is equal to op plus pn substitute that here sn is equal to op plus pn op plus pn is on substituting here i know what is the value of op here op is what op is equal to vector a op is equal to vector a so i want to know what is sn and pn so i can substitute in this equation in this equation 2 so i know what is sn is equal to what is op it is a vector plus pn so this is my second equation i want what is sn and pn i know what is op how will you find sn by pn by taking sin theta consider triangle consider triangle psn the blue triangle psn so opposite by hypotenuse will give me what is the value of sn pn i have already found out what is the value of pn pn is nothing but pn is nothing but b cos theta i have got pn using cos theta here so psn i want to find out what is the value of sn so i can find out what is the value of sn using sin theta formula because opposite by hypotenuse in triangle psn will give me the value of sn so what is sn sin theta is opposite by hypotenuse so sn by ps opposite by hypotenuse sn by ps opposite by hypotenuse so i want sn so sn is equal to bring the ps to lhs so it is ps sin theta so sn is equal to what is the value of ps ps 
S is nothing but vector B because OQ is vector B, OQ is parallel to PS, right? So if it is B vector, then PS is also B vector. Substituting, I will get B vector sin theta. So once I get SN, I also know what is the value of PN from cos theta. So substitute both the value in equation 2. So your tan alpha will be equal to Sn is nothing but vector B sin theta. What is OP? I know it is vector A plus what is Pn? It is B cos theta. From star equation we know Pn is equal to B cos theta. So it is B cos theta. So if I want alpha, if, when tan goes to the RHS, it will be tan inverse from the trigonometry. It will be tan inverse of B sin theta divided by vector A plus vector B cos theta. So this is the equation for finding the direction of two, ve two vectors. So if you want to find what is the magnitude of two vectors, then this is the equation for finding magnitude. You can also simplify this equation to r is equal to take the square root to the RHS. So it will be a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. You can also write it by shifting the square root. So this is the both two equations for finding magnitude and direction. So we consider two triangle OSN that is the yellow triangle and the PSN blue triangle. So keeping true triangle that is the right angle triangle we found out what is the direction and what is the magnitude. To find magnitude we used cos theta and also to find direction to find SN we used sin theta. So this is the expression for magnitude and direction of two vectors. Next we have resolution of vector. We have resolution of vector. What do you mean by resolution? Splitting up is called or dividing the two vectors into its components is called resolution. So let us read the definition. The process of splitting a vector into two or more component vector. The process of splitting a vector, say A vector, into two or more components of vector A such that the component vectors combine to produce the same effect as produced by the given vector is called resolution of vector. So resolution is nothing but splitting up of or dividing division of vectors into the constituent parts or constituent components. For example, Consider I have a three, two axes. Say this is my y axis and this is my x axis. I have two axes and this is my origin O. I have an object moving with acceleration, moving with some acceleration. I have an object which, which is moving with some acceleration, with some velocity. So, so I want to find out what is the acceleration of the object along x axis and along y axis. So along x axis the acceleration will be ax, along ay it will be acceleration of object will be ay. So my acceleration, total acceleration, acceleration is a vector quantity, total acceleration of object will be acceleration along x axis plus acceleration along y axis. So acceleration is split into its respective components. Acceleration is split, divided into its respective components along x-axis and y-axis. So this is what is called as resolution of vector. So splitting up of vectors into its respective components. If you have three axes, then there will be z-axis, then it will be plus a z. So a z. So splitting up of vectors into its components along x, y and z-axis. So let us read the second point. Let A and B be any two vectors. A and B be any two vectors. Let A and B be any two vectors in a plane. So what is plane? We need two axes. It is two dimensional motion. We need two axes X and Y. We need X and Y to describe the motion of the object. That is called plane. 
with different directions and let a be the resultant vector so now a capital a is my resultant vector so we know the triangle law of vector addition says that resultant r is nothing but sum of the two sides that sum of the two vectors so my resultant a will be sum of two vectors in the other two sides for example i have vector a and vector b i have vector a and vector b the resultant that is the third side which is opposite to a and b direction of a and b so this will give me my resultant a or it can represent with r so what is a here resultant a is sum of two vectors that is a plus b sum of two vectors or sum of two sides will give me the third side that is the resultant vector a so splitting up of vector splitting up of vector into its two components is called resolution of vector from triangle law we know vector a is a plus b so a plus b will give you resultant a here similarly we can also resolve a general vector along axis of rectangular coordinates we can also resolve a general vector along axis of rectangular coordinate system using vectors of unit magnitude and as unit vector unit magnitude means it is nothing but one it is nothing but one unit means the magnitude is equal to unity the magnitude is equal to unity unit vector means the magnitude of vector will be one so we can also resolve a general vector along axis of a rectangular coordinate system using what using vectors of unit magnitude i known as unit vector unit vector we'll discuss in detail about unit vector in our next slide so are you clear with resolution of vector what is resolution of vector splitting up of vector into its respective components we took the example of acceleration of the body so it is splitting up of vectors into its constituent components along x and y axis so we took we consider the triangle law of vector addition a is equal to a plus b vector so the resultant vector the result at the last the total vector is the divided into two components a and b a and b will give you the total resultant vector total vector so this is about resolution of vector so next we have a small derivation here where we have to find out resolving vector a in terms of component vectors in terms of component vector what is resolving vector if we have vector a then we have to find out what is its component component along x axis and y axis component vector that lie along unit vector i and j whenever we talk about vector that means it has both magnitude and direction so look at the example here acceleration of the body along x y is given if you have 3d then z will be included so when it is a vector quantity then direction we have to specify direction as well so acceleration of the body along x axis is given by a x i cap and along y it is given as a y j cap and along z it is given as a z k cap so i j k are what unit vector which is specifying the direction of body direction of acceleration of body so that is what we are discussing in resolution of vector we have to resolve vector a in term of the components that lie along the unit vector that lie along the unit vector i i j so the simple derivation so consider you can see we are considering 2d plane what is 2d plane that is nothing but we need two axes x as well as y to describe the motion of the object that is 2d plane this is my 2d plane so i have a vector a i have a vector a which is passing from the origin o i have vector a which is passing from my origin o so i'll use parallelogram law here so this is resolution of vector consider xy plane so consider a vector a in the xy plane so i will draw a perpendicular sp and oq to y and x axis 
I will draw a perpendicular SP along X axis and SQ along Y axis. A is the vector. A is the vector in the XY plane. A is the vector. So I will draw, I have drawn a perpendicular SP and SQ. So this A will make a project in the Y as AYJ cap and this A will make a projection along X axis as AX I gap. Though the reflection of A that falls along Y axis is AYJ cap and the reflection of vector A that is OS is giving me vector A. The projection of vector A is in the X axis. The shadow of A along X axis is AX I cap. So I will write it as so I have OP gives me AX, AX I cap is my unit vector which is specifying the direction of A along X axis and OQ, OQ represents vector A along Y axis with unit vector J cap. Now what is vector A? Vector A is resolved into AX I cap plus AY J cap. AX I cap plus AY J cap. So A is equal to the A, the vector A given by line OS. OS gives me vector A. Vector A is now resolved, splitted into X axis, its component along X axis plus its component along Y axis. So next, you can consider a triangle here. Triangle OSP, which is making angle theta, which is making angle theta. So I want to find out our angle theta now. Consider triangle OSP. From triangle OSP, what is my cos theta? Cos theta is what? Adjacent by hypotenuse. It is OP. OP by hypotenuse is OS, the largest side of the right angle triangle that is OS. So this will give me, so I know what is OS, what is OP. So I can write it as AX is equal to, what is OS? It is A again cos theta. This is my first equation. This is cos theta. Then what is sin theta? What is sin theta? Sin theta is given by opposite by hypotenuse. So it is PS opposite by hypotenuse is OS. Hypotenuse value is what? A. So it is A vector. And what is PS? It is OQ is parallel to PS. It is a parallelogram here. OQ is parallel to PS. That means it is PS is also AY. So I can write AY is equal to bring the A vector to LHS. It is A sin theta. I got equation 1. On squaring and adding on squaring and adding together equation 1 and 2. On squaring and adding you will get ax square plus ay square cos theta square plus sin theta square. When adding and squaring you will get cos square theta sin square theta. That is nothing but 1. So the remaining will be ax square plus ay square is equal to what? Is equal to a square. So on shifting the square root to LHS, it is AX square plus AY square. It is AX square plus AY square. So this is the magnitude. This is the magnitude. So how will you find direction? Direction is given by, we know it is tan alpha. Tan alpha is what? Opposite by adjacent will give you tan alpha. I have mentioned in the previous slide. Opposite by adjacent will give you tan alpha. So that is equal to opposite is ay adjacent is ax. So alpha is equal to when I bring the tan inverse to rhs it will be tan inverse. When I bring the tan to rhs it will be tan inverse of ay by ax. So this is the direction of resolution of vector. So clear how will you find resolution of vector? For resolution of vector, this is the diagram. This is the diagram. It's a parallelogram because adjacent is intersecting at a point and from that point we are joining, drawing a diagonal OS. So this diagonal gives me resultant vector A. 
the a i have to find out what are the components of this vector a now so this vector a and i draw in a perpendicular sp to x axis and sq to y axis so from here the projection of vector a along y axis its reflection in along y axis is given by a y j cap j cap is the direction specifying the direction in y axis and the reflection of vector a along x axis is given as a x i cap its reflection along x axis is given as i cap its direction along x axis is i cap so component a the resultant a is split into two components along x axis and y axis that is a a x i cap and a y i cap you can see now it is split into two components that is a along x axis a along y axis then i'll consider the triangle osp to find out the angle theta which is made by vector a along x axis so i'll consider cos theta that is what is cos theta adjacent by hypotenuse that will give me ax is equal to a a cos theta that is my first equation sin theta is opposite by hypotenuse that will give me a y by a vector a y is equal to a sin theta that is my second equation on squaring equation 1 and 2 and by adding them together you will get a x square plus a y square is equal to a square and there cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1 from trigonometry so we will be left out with this term so on shifting square you will get the magnitude of vector next we want to find direction tan alpha is equal to opposite by adjacent opposite is a y by a x will give you direction so this is the resolution of vector if you have 3d for 3d then the magnitude will be a is equal to root of a x square plus a y square plus a z square for 3d and this is in case of three dimension if you have x y and z axis then this will be the magnitude we'll have the component a along z direction so next we have unit vectors so we have already discussed what is unit vector unit vector a vector of unit magnitude whose magnitude is equal to unity magnitude is equal to unity so unit vector we describe a vector of unit magnitude is called unit vector so it has no dimension and unit it specifies direction of the vector unit vector specify the direction of vector and it is represented by cap symbol cap so unit vector is represented by a and cap over it so this is the representation of unit vector so mathematical representation if you have to calculate what is unit vector then it is given by a cap it is the representation of unit vector a cap is equal to vector a divided by modulus of vector a this is the formula to calculate unit vector for example you have what is vector a what 4i cap plus 2j cap plus 1k cap for example vector a is given from which i have to find out unit vector so this is the formula you use to find unit vector mathematical representation so a cap unit vector is equal to what is the vector 4i cap plus 2j cap plus 1k cap divided by when it is modulus how will you find modulus that is nothing but square root of that is nothing but square root of how do you find modulus a it is nothing but square root of square root of square of sum of square of so how do you find modulus a modulus a is nothing but square root of sum of magnitudes in the vector a sum of magnitudes to square sum plus sum sum of squares of magnitude in vector a that will give you what is the modulus a so once you get that on simplification you can find out what is a vector when you have i here when you have i i square is nothing but when you have 4i 4i whole square 4 square what is i square i square is nothing but equal to 1 i square j square k square is nothing but 1 so 4 i square is nothing but 1 so i square j square is equal to 1 so leaving that you have 4 square 2 square 1 square on simplification you can get the value 
what is please do it on the simplification you will get what is the value of unit vector so this is the formula to calculate unit vector mathematical representation of unit vector unit vector so unit vector the magnitude is unity it will specify the direction of vector along x y and z axis next you have vector addition analytical method so far in the previous chapter we have studied already what is the vector addition in graphical method that is motion in a straight line in motion in 1d in the chapter 3 we studied vector addition in graphical method so here in the fourth chapter motion in a plane we will study the vector addition by analytical method not graphical but analytical method what is this vector addition by analytical method consider we have two vectors consider two vectors vector a and vector b consider two vectors a and b in plane means x y plane two axis specifying the motion of a and b vector consider two vectors a and b in x y plane so we have to find the components of a and b in the x y plane similar to resolution of vector so what is the component of vector a what is the component of vector a component of vector a is nothing but a x i cap plus a y j cap along x and y axis what is the component of b vector then it is b x i cap plus b y j cap so these are the two components of vector a and vector b along in a x y plane why it is x y plane because we consider two dimension to describe the motion of the object motion of two vectors so it is we don't have z component it is just x and y the component of b vector along x and y axis so we are resolving vector b into its respective component and i j cap are the direction along x and y axis so from triangle law of vector addition we know that resultant resultant is equal to resultant is equal to a plus b sum of two vectors a b gives you resultant so on simplifying equation 1 and 2 in the equation 3 we will get it as vector a along x axis plus vector a along y axis plus vector b along x axis plus vector y along vector a along x axis vector a along y axis plus vector b along x axis vector b along y axis so i can resolve r resultant r also along x and y axis so i'll get rx i cap plus ry j cap resultant vector along x axis plus resultant vector along y axis is equal to a along x axis a along y axis plus b along x axis plus b along y axis so separating the x term together and separating the y term together so on separating the components what will you get i'll get rx is equal to ax on splitting on separating x component to one side and y component to another side you will get rx is equal to ax plus bx ry is equal to ay plus by on separating the components to x and y axis so if you have the three dimension if it is 3d if it is 3d then you will also have z axis then in the x y z plane so you will have x y z plane if it is 3d then the, you will have equation r z also r z is equal to a z plus b z a along z axis and b along z axis and the unit vector would be k 
So, this is the vector addition in analytic method. So, we will consider a xy plane. We will consider a xy plane, xy plane and the components of vector A, we have studied resolution is what? Splitting up of components. So, component of A is split into AX, AY. Component of B is split into BX, BY. So, it is the component of B and A. So, next we use triangle of vector addition. R is equal to A plus B. So, we know R is equal to AX, AY plus BX, BY. So, we can resolve R also. We can resolve R also into its respective component along X and Y axis. So, you will get this equation. If you have Z, then we will include RZ, AZ, K cap and BZ, K cap here. For 2D, it is only X and Y. On separating X term one side and Y term to other side, we got the equation as Rx is equal to Ax plus Bx, Ry is equal to Ax plus By. Next, you have a numerical. A motor boat is racing. A motor boat is racing towards north at 25 km per hour and water current in that region is 10 km per hour in the direction of 60 degree east of south. 60 degree east of south. So, I have to find out the resultant velocity, the resultant velocity of the boat. What is the total velocity of the boat? So, I have a motor boat. You can see here a picture of motor boat. A motor boat is racing towards north. This is your north, south, east and west. You know the directions. So, motor boat is racing towards north at 25 km per hour. So, I will consider it as Vb. The velocity of boat towards north. Vb is what? 25 km per hour. And water current in that direction, in the same direction, in the north, the water current, let us take it as Vc. Velocity of water current in that region, it is 10 km per hour. And it is given the direction of 60 degree east to south. This is your east, this is your south. So, it is moving in this direction, in this direction, east to south. So, you have a motor boat which is racing towards north. So, the velocity of boat will be 25 km per hour and the velocity of water current, I have taken it as Vc. The water current in this region, in this region is 10 km per hour. So, it is racing for 10 km per hour. In this region, it is racing 10 km per hour in the direction 60 degree. So, it is racing in this direction in 60 degree east-south. East, south. So, using parallelogram, can you see I want to find out this is 60 degree and I want to find out what is this angle theta, what is this angle theta. So, can you see, you can see a parallelogram here, you can see a parallelogram here. So, using the law of parallelogram, I will find out what is the resultant velocity, both magnitude as well as direction. So, what is resultant velocity? R is equal to A square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta. From the previous slide, we know that this is the equation to find out magnitude. So, r is equal to, I will take a is equal to my velocity of boat and b is equal to velocity of water current. So, substituting that, it is vb square plus vc square plus 2 vb vc so, now what is cos theta? What is theta here? See, we know that if we have east, south, north, west, this is the direction. Each pole, each direction make an angle 90 degree. 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. So, each angles make an angle of 90 degree. So, in that 90 degree, they have mentioned it is moving 60 degree east of south. So, in 90 degree, if 60 degree is gone, well, how much is remaining? It is 30 degree, right? It is 30 degree here. I want to find out the angle from here to here. From here to here, I want to find out what is the angle now. So, this is also from north to east. It is making an angle 90. Then, 60, 90 minus 60 is 30. You have 60 here plus 30 will make 90 degree. And I have 90 here. 
So what is 90 plus 30? It is 120 degree. So I want to find out into cos 120 degree. So that will give me the angle from here to here. From here to here I know it is 60 degree. But every direction make an angle of 90 degree each. So in 90 if 60 is gone it is 30. 30 plus this 90 from here to here it is 90 plus this 30. So 30 plus 90 is 120. What is cos 120? Cos 120 is minus half. On substitution cos 120 is minus half. Simplify the values. So it will be what is VB? 25 square plus what is VC? It is 10 square plus 2 into 25 into 10 into cos. So cos 120 degree is minus half. So divided by whole root. So this will give me R is equal to root of 475. Simplify this term. You will get on simplification what is your R? R is equal to 21.8 kilometer per hour is the unit. So you will get what is R on taking the root of 475. So on simplify this you will get this value taking root will give you what is R. This is my magnitude. Then what will you do for direction? To find out direction. So find out direction. To find out direction, use law of signs, law of sciences. So, to find out the direction, use the law of signs. So that is nothing but R by sin theta is equal to Vc by Vc by the water current by sin 5, sin 5. So use this formula to find out the direction that is law of signs that is nothing but equal to that is nothing but equal to I want to find out what is the direction to sin 5 is equal to on reversing you will get Vc sin theta divided by R. Vc sin theta divided by R. So here what is sin theta? It is we know it is 120. So what is Vc? Vc is 10. 10 into what is sin sin 120 degree we know it is root 3 by 2 from trigonometry it is root 3 by 2 substitute that here root 3 by 2 into what is the value of r 21.8 kilometer substitute that here so it will give you sin 5 is equal to 0 0.3 so sin 5 is equal to 0 0.397 so uh, when sin goes to rhs it is inverse sine inverse of 0 0.397. So using Clack's table, you can find out the nearest value for sine inverse of 0 0.397. From Clack's table, you can find out 5 is equal to 23 degree, approximately 23 degree. This is how you solve the numerical. So using parallelogram, you can see here, you're getting a parallelogram. Why? From the two edges inside, the diagonal is passing from the same point. So using the Analyzing this diagram, you use the formula that we have derived in the previous slide. For the magnitude and for direction, we use law of sciences that is R by sin theta is equal to Vc by sin 5. I wanted to find out what is sin 5. So on shuffling, we will get 5 is equal to 23 degree. This is how you solve the numerical. That's all for today's session. In today's session, we studied the very interesting topic that is subtraction of vectors. We cannot subtract the vectors directly. So we take, we consider the addition. We define subtraction in terms of addition of vector. We add the minus of vector b to the plus a so you will get subtraction of vector then we derive the expression to find out magnitude and direction of two vector after finding magnitude and direction i have again solved the resolution of vector so what do you mean by resolution splitting web of vector into its component terms so ax what is the vector a vector a along the component x ax along y a y so it's splitting vector a with to its respective components is resolution of vector then we derived the resolution of vector for i and j for direction i i j then we study what is unit vector which specify the direction of the vector unit magnitude is one that is unit vector after unit vector 
we studied vector addition analytical method in 1d we studied graphical method in 2d we are studying analytical method we are resolving the vector a into its component vector b in its component we are taking x y plane and we are doing the vector addition then we studied a numerical that how we calculate the velocity resultant velocity of boat of a moving boat using the magnitude and direction using the magnitude of direction using the parallelogram how we find out magnitude and how we find out direction so that's all about today's session so next i'll be coming up with more interesting sessions on motion in a plane so until then take care have a good day thank you